Hello, hope you're all well. Let's take a look at some of the UI things that we did in our UI pass. So the first most obvious thing I can see here is the interact button. Uh, and this is the button that you use to basically do everything on the map. So I wanted it to be nice and prominent. So Rich did this kind of amazing cyberpunk, huge interact button, which I really like. Up here, we've um, trimmed this down so that you can see uh, the view modes really easily. I decided to keep this as words rather than icons with this mouse over that explains what they are. Um, we've reconfigured this, which is shape control. Um, shape control is basically the area of influence that a faction has. And you can now see that very readily. Um, and one of the cool things that is that as you fast forward, if you play the game uh, just on fast forward, you can see the factions doing their thing and expanding and doing various exciting uh, tactics on here and their areas will grow kind of commensurate with what they're doing. Uh, the district view here is a bit broken at the moment, but we'll also generally show you where the districts are and those are all labeled now, so that's good. Uh, let me quickly show you some really hugely improved UI flow. So if I want to go to this building, so this is a uh, guest's hacker space, I just click on the building, I interact with it, I go send squad here, and then now I can just select my squad out of here. Um, so you have these nice areas that tell you what's in the squad, they'll also tell you what the squad's carrying. Uh, I just noticed that that is overlapping slightly, so that needs a little bit of a tweak. Um, you can also still go into the squad screen and edit your squad, and you can now deploy the squad here. That button is a lot easier to use. You can see what the squad is carrying. Uh, you can see the regeneration state of the squad as well. So I could still use these buttons to send the squad, or I could deploy the squad, or I could just back out of this and ignore it. Um, so send squad here, pick the squad. That squad is now off on the mission, uh, which is really good. So we're going to get rid of that. We don't need that currently. Um, what else do we have? We have the new faction screen, which has a problem there. What we ended up doing was we needed to keep this thing of the UI being on both sides of the screen. It's not ideal. We played around with a lot of different things, but this allows you to use the map in the middle now. The map is unlocked, so you can continue to use it. Um, and also, it, because of the way our UI scaling works, putting everything on one side of the screen was too crammed, um, and it needs to be around the edges so that as different resolutions come into play, it can resize nicely. Again, it's not ideal, but a lot of UI things are compromises. So here, if I select for given geometry, that's just in the way, uh, select for given geometry here, I can now see their shape control overlaid. So I can see where all their buildings are. Um, and I can go through these nice tabs here. Uh, we can get a bio here. We can look at their military strength. We can look at all of their squads. And now it's really easy to select their squad uh, and just find where it is on the map. Here, that, here we go, so we can pass through all the squads, and we can interact with them from this screen. So now I can send uh, out my squads to intercept theirs, like all the way through, just from the faction screen itself, which is really nice. Similarly, their buildings, I can look through here and see all of their buildings um, and interact with them via this menu. So it really, the flow of this is massively, massively better. On this game, what we've gone for is flow and usability, kind of above aesthetic things. So we don't have as many whizzy sort of animating UI elements as some games do. Um, with our engine and our tech, it's a little bit hard for us to do that. So we've just gone for things that basically make it easy to do everything. Here we can see the diplomatic status of this faction um, and so on. And from this screen, we can call up the faction leader um, and we've tidied up this a bit so that you can, you can talk to them and then you can now go through everything uh, just really, really easily and really seamlessly. So that is working well. Uh, the economy screen here just opens up your tab within the faction screen. So again, it's really easy to just kind of look through and see what's going on with you. Um, that even works correctly, amazing. And here we can also look at our own infrastructure. We can see our, our HQ there, uh, <laughs> a placeholder um, button. You can now rename your bases and interact with them and so on from this screen. So again, trying to keep everything maximally flexible, just let you do what you want to do quickly with no fuss. Uh, the mercenary market here is fine. The screen is still a bit of a mess. Uh, needs some tweaking around, but that basically works okay. Um, the contract screen, again, this has been simplified. Um, now you can see very quickly how difficult a contract is, whether it's going to be light or dark, who's offering it, lots of different things. Um, and I think you can, uh, that's just a bug, you shouldn't be able to do that. Um, but you can see where it is, it comes up sort of automatically and zooms there. And now there's just a sort of big, simple button to accept it. So we're pretty happy with how this has gone. I think, um, personally, I'm 
always someone who's trying to make everything like as aesthetically nice as possible and everything aligned and like looking for these one pixel out issues and so on. And I'll continue doing that as there's more minor tweaks that come into play. But fundamentally, I think everything is there. It was really nice to get some comments from um, you on the previous video saying that generally you felt the UI was fine already. And this has sort of taken it to that, that next level. Now it's really fun to zoom around the map and do things. So a, a quick look at some of the in-level stuff next. Um, and then I'll move on to discussing what we're doing currently. Okay, here we are in the level. First thing to note is the deployment screen, which I showed a bit last time. Uh, you can still drag your units around, but now you can also pick them up with this and the deployment screen will tell you uh, why you can't, you can or can't place a unit in a specific area. So here we can see I'm in, I'm in line of sight from an enemy. Here I can see that I'm trying to put it in a locked area. And so these are unnavigable areas and so on. So that's actually, that actually kind of makes it really easy. One thing that we've done is just massively boost these mouse over and selection things. So now if, even if I'm zoomed out, you're not gonna be doing a lot of tactical planning when you're really zoomed out. Um, you'll be able to mouse over and select the units like this. Um, so obviously there's an enemy there. That's an unaware enemy and we now have the circle around them to show that. Previously they were just a different color but this kind of makes that a lot clearer which is particularly nice. Tidied up things around here, tidied up the minimap that now sits kind of in its own area. It doesn't look so messy. Um, the long turns button now is just a toggle here as opposed to that sort of checkbox thing. So I can toggle that's a long turn and that's a normal turn. This will have some mouse over and some explanation of that as well. Um, orders menu just tidied up now. It's just sort of nicely aligned and the, the graying out of things uh, works correctly. These exit zones have been changed to be a kind of gray color um, that makes them, you can still identify them, but they don't stick out too much. One of the things we're really battling with still is these exit zones, uh, sorry, these unlock zones. We have to use um, this kind of material technique for them, but as you can see here, and there's lots of them, it gets a bit stroby and uh, it's sort of less than ideal still. So we've still got to find a way of balancing those, uh, something that I shall be looking into further with our long suffering artist Rich who's had to deal with all this stuff. Um, but basically now like it's a lot of kind of quality of life things here going on um, that just make everything uh, a lot simpler to use. And we're now kind of at the stage where we're pretty much done with in level stuff. So things are happening, things are happening. So for this section, I'm just gonna go back to the map screen and, and show you a few things that are happening. So we talked about ventures before. Um, ventures basically are the things that factions do off their own back. So they're the things that they do to kind of just build up their money and build up their prestige and, and execute their general plans outside of the incursions. What Ian is working on currently is how you're going to interface with those ventures. So if you go and attack a venture, what happens? And what we've been doing is looking at all of this content that we've done um, and try to figure out how we can classify it and how we can make it something that you can deal with. So there are a few different classes of venture. Um, one of them is going to be a meeting. So if uh, a group from one faction go and they meet with some characters or they meet with, you know, people that they're trying to influence, or whatever, then we'll have a general setup around that, which will enable us to do procedurally generated missions based on it. So for example, if I went here, this is a guest and they're working to discredit a public figure. So they're trying to get information on them, maybe, maybe intimidate them. I can go here and I'll intervene. And I'll be able to see that little scene happening as it played out. Now there's a fair amount of work to do um, on this. It's one of the last major pieces of the puzzle for the game. This and the contracts uh, are pretty important. But we do have things uh, in already, like I talked to you about previously, where um, if I go and talk to that faction now, hopefully if I call them, um, they will say, yes, we're currently gathering some information to expose a moral bankruptcy at the heart of the MJNC. You'll love it when it comes out. So they'll be, they're, they're talking about their faction, uh, their ventures that they're doing currently and the system for you to actually attack those ventures is happening. Outside of that, we have a whole load of different things that are in progress. I'm going to put the game on fast forward and we can hopefully look at some shape control changing. It's a bit glitchy at the moment, but still. Um, we are working now to rein everything in and make sure that it all works correctly. As soon as the ventures and contracts are done, we're basically going to be able to finally play the game for a long amount of time and do balancing and, and see how all the main story, which is all done, interacts with these freeform things. And that really is about a week away. Um, 
which is an incredible point to be at. Uh, it's incredible to have everything functioning. Uh, and then it'll really be about massaging the systems, making sure that the gameplay experience is good. We're going to get some more testing happening. Um, we're going to look at all the different things that can happen. There's a lot of potential endings in the game, not just endings to the story, but endings that can happen when factions take control. Wow, Safeguard are doing really well in this playthrough. Uh, they've kind of expanded all over the map. I'm actually just going to stop talking and look at uh, what's happened to them. Oh, that's not Safeguard's Forgiven Geronty, excuse me. So this graph eventually will show you kind of how their influence is uh, working. And you can see they've kind of peaked up there. Um, they have a lot of squads going on, wow. Uh, and quite a few buildings and quite a few things that they've taken over. So that might well be from Ventures. I'm happy about this because Safeguard, I mistook them for Safeguard there, that's, that's Safeguard. Uh, they tend to be the ones that kind of do well militarily. Um, one thing we definitely need to sort out is this glitch with the shape control re, uh, reconfiguring itself, but um, you can see how that works. Anyway, sorry, I got distracted by uh, by my simulation here. It's um, it's really at the point now where all we have to do is put those things in place, get more feedback from you, and play it ourselves, and and, and then and then it will be getting close to bugs. Uh, bug testing time and release. So we really are on course to get this game out pretty soon. Thank you so much for being so patient with us. I know we've had these multiple release dates and so on, but this is a very complicated game, as you can see, and there is a lot happening. So hopefully soon, I'll have more to show you on uh, those ventures, how those are working, um, some more combination of map and level gameplay, just to give you a sense of how that's connecting together. And uh, we're, we're building up a, a big head of steam to go into release, hopefully some point soon. Thanks for watching. As always, uh, do ask questions in the comments. Most of your comments last time were about UI stuff, and we've now kind of moved through that phase, so I'm not going to be talking about those this time, but ask me anything as ever, and I will do my best to respond. Thanks.